So I want to say to those of us who are probably still in a wilderness. In other words, you've heard the stories, the testimonies of changed and transformed lives. And yours doesn't look like anything has happened. God is no respecter of persons. What he did for one, he can do for another. There is no hopeless case with God. There is no hopeless, there is absolutely no hopeless case with God. Regardless of where you are right now, God can pick you up, clean you up, raise you up to the shock of your detractors. He can so clean you up that when you are telling your story, people will doubt you because they can't relate the person talking with what he's saying. Only God can do that. You see, you don't lose serving God. That, that's the other thing you need to learn from what you have seen. So, so regardless, regardless of where you are, understand, first of all, like I was saying earlier on, nobody loses serving God. Even though while you are doing it initially, it may seem like nothing will come out of it or nothing is coming out of it. People may even subject you to mockery. But God cannot fail. God cannot lie. He says that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, he said, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work, because you know that your labor is not in vain. I mean, these guys are attest to the fact that they serve God passionately, wholeheartedly, and when they tell you that they were in church practically every day, they were really in church every single day. Every single day. And there was also, I mean, all the, I bear witness to everything they said. The love factor. The love factor. There was a bond that was stronger than the bond between families. A bond that made, made them stand up for each other. Be there for each other. Never leaving a wounded soldier behind. And then God began to reach them. Most of them are married today. So, so God loves you. God has a plan for your life. He not only loves you, you see, somebody can love you without having a plan for you. Right? But God loves you and he has a plan for you. All you need to do is to discover what that plan is. Step into it by faith. He will carry you through. He will carry you through. Regardless of where you are right now. One of the anchor scripture for this ministry, and that's part of why we do what we do. One of the scriptures God gave me when this ministry was being born, 1 Samuel 2.8, that he raises the poor from the dust, the needy from the dunghill, and he sets them among the princes. And so when we say that God brings people from the backside to the front side, that's what it means. That's where it is from. It's from that scripture. God brings people from the backside to the front side, and we have seen it happen repeatedly again and again and again and again. When, when Chidi used to come, you know, back then, many times he didn't have transport fare. Transport fare. Until I had to detail Pastor Bola, you know what? Keep, put your eyes on him. Make sure he has transport fare whenever he needs it and make sure he's in charge. I don't know how much Pastor Bola gave him then. But I'm sure all that amount is not up to what he gives on a Sunday morning. Today. It's not up to what he gives on a Sunday morning. Everyone here has their story. So if you are feeling like, God, what's happening? 
You know, because sometimes at this age, one of the things that people battle with is that sense of what God was next for me. Is there a nesting for me? God, where, where am I going? What does the future hold for me? I want to say to you that God cannot lie. Yes, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says that his plan for you are plans of good, not evil. To give you an expected end. Another translation says to give you a future and a hope. So God has a good plan for you. Your future is already crafted. All you need to do is to make that discovery and release yourself to God. Hallelujah. You are battling with an addiction. The God who did it for others will do it for you. But you have to be willing. I mean, um, I already talked about how, you know, God helped her break an addiction, a pattern of addiction. There are several people like that. You are battling with an addiction. God can help you break it regardless of what it is. You see, addiction, most often than none, is um, our own way of trying to make up for um, a sense of hopelessness that we feel. So we want to numb the feeling. We want to numb the fears. We want to numb the anxiety. We want to just shut it down. But you see, if you are battling with an addiction, experience will tell you that those addictions have never really succeeded in altering the problem. Only Jesus can fix it. Only Jesus can fix it. Only Jesus can bring that wholeness and healing that your soul desires. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So don't despair. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't give up. I've also heard people talking about, you know, thoughts of suicide filtering into their, their head. It, listen, if you are a young person, let me say this. If you are a young person, there should be no reason under the earth to even contemplate it. Why? Because you have your future ahead of you. Anybody in their 50s will give you anything to trade your age for theirs. Why? Because they have experience. They understand that if they have their lives to live again, regardless of how messed up it is at your age, they can make it good. They can make it work. So, so you are one of your greatest assets and advantage is your youthful age. So how, how can you even begin to think and contemplate of terminating it? When you have just begun. You have not even begun. You are just about to start. So you've made mistakes in the past. So what? You've, you've, you've bungled so many things in the past. So what? God can give you a brand new start. And in, in a year, two years, three years from now, nobody will believe your story when you tell it. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So you are in the right place. If you are thinking of, now, wh why are we passionate about young people? Because like I just said, young people, if they are well, their energy is well directed and focused, regardless of what their past is, they can make a brilliant future. They can make a great future. I used to tell my son that if I had somebody that, you know, um, communicates with me and gives me counsel like I do. Uh, a lot of mistakes I made growing up, I wouldn't make them. So one of my driving force is to help young people not to waste their lives. And to tell them that there is so much, a continent of undiscovered potential that they can unleash. Don't allow your fears to hold you back. Don't allow your background to hold you back. All those things are insufficient. They are inadequate in the light of destiny. 
you are not an accident. Or perhaps you might just be here and say, well, um, how can you see I'm not an accident when my parents gave birth to me out of wedlock? Go and ask Solomon. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. You see, to your parents, you are an accident, but to God, you are not. Why? The scripture is clear. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. No child enters that womb without God knowing. He said, before you were formed, I knew you. Before you came out, I ordained your purpose. So God has your life planned out, figured out. And it's a brilliant one. And one of the things that will aid your manifesting destiny is to be in the right circle. To be in the right place. You see, the power of association. A place where you get inspired, you hear stories, you get challenged, even if you are lagging behind because of the stories or the obvious lives of people you are seeing. You are inspired. You don't want to stay back. That's that's big advantage. You see, the company you keep can determine your outcome in life. Can determine your future, your destiny. So if you find yourself in this kind of environment, it is because God has a big plan for you. This is where your dreams can be nurtured. A lot of dreams are being nurtured here. You heard Mario Slim testify. I still remember that fateful day after the first discovery for you. The following Sunday, he walked up to me and said, Sir, I love these people singing. I love the way they sang so professionally. Is it ever possible that I can sing like them? And I said, why not? I took him and handed him over to the music director. And of course, the rest is history. He eventually became so good that he became a music director. And today, through music, he has traveled across nations. So dreams are nurtured here. Lives are inspired. Talents are honed. Skills are honed right in this place. So if you think that you were born to be a mediocre, just hang around here long enough. Uh, very soon you discover otherwise. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to challenge you. Don't just, if you've been coming here, don't, don't be satisfied being a benchmark anymore. All these people testified. None of them was a bench woman. They were actively involved in serving God. Wholeheartedly devoted. While their friends were busy mocking them, they were committed. Today, they have become lights in those circles. So give yourself only to God. This is the time you have. Like I tell them, you see, when you get married, um, the dynamics change. Completely. I mean, as a single person, as a youth, you, you, you can stay in church after service for the next six hours. But if you are married, you dare not try it. You dare not try it. Honey, where are you? I'm coming. You have told me you have come in up to four times now. Don't let me come to that church and meet you. The, the dynamics change, especially... If your spouse is not in the same local assembly with you. So, so now that you are young, pour yourself to God. Give yourself to God. So that someday, sometime, you also have a story to tell. We are the future. We are the future. We got the power. We are. Hey there. Ever thought of a community where you can grow spiritually while networking with like minds and having fun? Welcome to the Rave Community. Blam, 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 blam. In the Rave Community, we are diverse groups of energetic and vibrant youth. We come together to fellowship, we make lasting memories, we worship God in truth and with all devotion. Ecclesiastes 12 was one. Remember that I created the days of your youth when you still have energy. 
So yeah, the community will pray, will slay, we get swag and we get altar. Do you need guidance? We've got you covered. At the Rave community, we mentor one another, grow spiritually and mentally through God's word from our father, Reverend Lawrence Onatri. There's no discrimination here. We fear nothing because we are revised. We support and love each other through thick and thin. One thing about the rave community is that we're a big family. But we also have smaller groups called rave tribes. These tribes help us to get closer to people who are similar to us. So we are friends nearby. We stick together and support each other through everything, no matter where we come from. It's all about accepting each other and learning together. Ready to experience all this? Join us. Attend our super packed service and participate in building a vibrant community with us. Your heavenly rays start here. Join the Rave community today and discover a home where we fellowship with God with other vibrant youths. Guys, you know what I mean? Is. 1 p.m. every Sunday. See you there. The Rave community. The Rave community. We fear nothing. Yeah.